The next property we're going to look at is even and odd. So I got the definition for even and odd written down. Uh, even, what that means is, is if your input's negative, it's the same as the input being positive and vice versa. Uh, odd means if your input's negative, your output's negative. So the way I like to think about odd function is that this negative sign can be pulled through your function. So basically you can take f of negative x equals, you can bring this negative out front, negative f of x. So that's how I think of the odd function property. Uh, how I think of the even function property, uh, if you have f of negative x, you can just erase the negative sign and not worry about it. It's just regular f of x. So where do these names come from? Well, back in your previous math class, you should have seen that they came from polynomials, where an even function, the easiest uh, even function to think about is x squared. And when you plug in negative x, you do need to be careful. So I'm plugging in negative x to the f function. You need to make sure you square negative x. It would be incorrect to think about it as grouped up like this. I'm not actually squaring negative x in this case. I'm squaring x and then applying a negative outside. And that's not how functional composition works. So an even function for just x squared, when you plug in negative x squared, well, you just get out regular x squared. So that's even. Now, why is the name even? It's because the power's even. This will be true anytime you have an even power there. All right, odd. Odd function, x cubed, and three is an odd number. So what happens when you plug in negative x here? You're going to get f of negative x equals. You have to make sure you're cubing that. And of course, negative times negative times negative is going to be the same as just a single negative. And this could be written as negative the original function. Because this right here is f of x. So x cubed is an odd function. And if you're having trouble with function composition, how this works, <clears throat> you could think of applying the function f to a box. It's basically just a placeholder, and then you put the input inside the box. Now it looks silly in this notation right here, because in math we use parentheses. So there's the parenthesized version right there. So you just want to use parentheses. Be a little careful when you're plugging these in. All right, back to trigonometry. So how does even functions work with trig? Well, let's think, what does it mean to have a negative input in a trig function? Well, our inputs are actually theta values now. So what happens when you plug in a negative theta value? This might be the worst circle I've drawn in a while. Let's make this more circular. Beautiful. All right. So now I'm going to draw negative theta, so it's going to be going the opposite direction. It's definitely going to have related x and y coordinates. So what's the difference in these x and y coordinates? Well, you should be able to tell the x coordinate remains unchanged. And let's think about what this means. If I move the opposite, I rotate the opposite direction, I get the exact same x coordinate. And what does that correspond to? That's cosine. So my first even function is cosine theta. I'll write that in here. So that means cosine negative theta is cosine theta. It doesn't matter which way you rotate, you're going to get the same x coordinate. Uh, the reciprocal function is secant. So the same thing happens with secant. So those are your even functions. Now, let's look at the y-coordinate when we rotate the opposite direction. So I intentionally didn't write that before because I didn't want you to think about it. So now we're going to write in the y-coordinate. What happens? Our y-coordinate is definitely different, so it becomes negative. All right, this y-coordinate is the sine function. So what that means is that sine of negative theta is negative of what the original sign was. And let's write that down. This makes sine odd. So we have 
sine negative theta, if I rotate the wrong way, I'm going to get the opposite output. The output is going to change from positive to negative. So that means sine negative theta equals negative sine theta. The input changes sine, the output changes sine. The reciprocal cosecant also changes sign. So now for tangent and cotangent, we're going to use algebra. So let's start with tangent negative theta. One of the strategies, one of the ways to deal with tangent is right in terms of sines and cosines. Now this is tangent of negative theta, so it's sine negative theta over cosine negative theta. And now we already have the even odd properties. So sine is odd, which means I can take this negative and drag it in front. So we have negative sine theta. Cosine theta is even, so I can just erase that negative sign. So that's just cosine theta. So now all we have is sine over cosine with a negative. So it's negative tangent theta. So tangent is odd because it's an odd function divided by an even function. It turns out to be odd. So tangent negative theta equals negative tan theta. Cotangent's the same. The only difference in cotangent is you're gonna swap numerator denominator, but you're still gonna have one negative sign, which is going to uh, make the whole thing negative. So that's the end of even odd properties for your trig functions.